here to renew our Catholic faith. We thank you, Lord, for having given us this opportunity, just as St. Patrick came here to light that fire. We thank the Lord for these and the Lord for 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 the it is such a joy. You know, for, I'm looking out at the priests and the priests from other continents and thanking God for 50 years, I have had the privilege of ministering in over 100 countries with Father Kevin and now with Father Pablo. But you know, one of the beautiful testimonies of Ireland is that we have been in all the continents and in islands around the world and what the Irish missionaries brought to the world, both priests, sisters, and missionaries. And as I was here today, listening to our Archbishop, and thinking what a grace Ireland has been. And we can never, ever thank our ancestors. And when you read, you know, the life stories, of the Irish. There's a wonderful book that I got reprinted to give to the priest, Ireland's Loyalty to the Mass, of the martyrs, of the priests that suffered so much that we would have this great gift. And the only thing I'm going to tell you is that I got the most beautiful insight five months ago that I never read, nobody ever said this to me except when I was in adoration. And you know, brothers and sisters, please realize this is Jesus, a person, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And he does talk to us, and he does heal us. We as Catholics must never forget that we're not all the same. We're, we should be, as Catholics, completely, as the Archbishop said, a light, because we receive the Lord. But a woman came to me one day back in my parish where I come when I'm not traveling to, in Florida. And she said, Sister Bridge, please pray for me. I'm very weak and I've been getting blood transfusions and the doctors say, it, they don't seem to be helping me, so there must be something wrong with me. And I said, I'm going home to the convent to adoration. So I was at adoration and it's clear, I heard Jesus saying to me, tell my people, I give them every day, every Sunday, a blood transfusion of my own body and blood. Did you ever think of it, brothers and sisters, that we receive a blood transfusion of the blood, body and blood that Jesus gave to us on Holy Thursday night? And if there's anything the enemy, Satan, wants to do, is to prevent us from getting that extraordinary gift. And I beg you, please, you have to your umbrellas, but listen, please recognize that the priesthood of Ireland, I'm in the ministry for 50 years to priests all over the world, with Father Kev and now Father Pablo. And I beg you, as the Irish people, vocations come through families. The vocations that these men have come from families who love the priesthood, who don't keep allowing themselves to be hijacked by the enemy to destroy the greatest gift we have. The Eucharist and the priesthood go hand in hand. And I look at our African priests here or whatever continent, and I've been to many African countries over 50 years, and I've seen what Irish missionaries and sisters and priests, doctors, did in these countries, as well as far away as Papua New Guinea and all over Asia, and I tell, I say to myself all the time, when people talk to me about Ireland and they say to me, oh, the faith is dying now, Ireland. This is a testimony, not just a testimony. The faith is not dying. We are, as, as our Archbishop told us, we are the people that will bring the faith alive, as, this, so, uh, as the beautiful hymn that uh, Dana sang. 
And just to finish off, you know, it was in St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York in May the Father Pablo and myself were invited, invited by the Cardinal to give Edoin and the parish priest there, the ministry, to give the first parish mission ever in St. Patrick's, New York. And Diana was invited to come and sing, like the fire, and Damien. And Damien's very humble. He's a brother of Father Kevin's, but he's, he was the one that got the inspiration and said to me, here we are in St. Patrick's in America singing, like the fire. He said, you know, we should really light it. We should uh, get to slain where the fire was lit. And that's how the inspiration started. So I thank you for that. So now we're going to pray for healing, though you have already received healing through Jesus and the inspired words and, and everything that happened here. But I'm going to pray, and as many of you know me, I love coming to minister in Ireland. I, I love my country. And I pray and I'm thankful for opportunities like this. And we go to knock tomorrow where we will be praying for the priests and getting the people to pray in knock. We just finished a week of over 60 priests coming in and out to the intercession in Manu. And it was, it was wonderful, brothers and sisters. You have wonderful priests in Ireland. You have great men. So, let's pray now. I'm going to pray now for all of you for the healing power of Jesus to penetrate you. And when the miracles do happen. I see miracles all the time through the Eucharist. Just last week, a couple of weeks ago, in Madrid, at one of the, the masses and Eucharistic healing service and a parish mission, a woman was one of many who never walked when she was 18 and was miraculously healed and told nothing could ever happen. The one thing we have is it's no person, we don't have to go to a healer or go looking for Sister Breach. As Catholics and as people who come to Mass, you have the opportunity to personally meet Jesus. And he never broke his promise. He will not, you may not get exactly what you think, but you'll get better. Because Jesus made promises that were never broken, but we get impatient. So I really encourage you today, as Jesus walks among you, I'm going to bring the blessed sermon. As Jesus walks in mind, look at the sacred host and ask Jesus for whatever you need. He loves us to be totally dependent on him, to trust him. The impossible is not impossible to him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I adore you. And I thank you this day, Jesus, for the privilege of being here. Just as it is raining upon us, Lord, we think of the great suffering of our ancestors when they couldn't do what we're doing in public, when they were afraid, Lord, when they died for, so they could pass on their faith. I pray today, Lord Jesus, that you give to us a great renewal in our faith. I pray that you heal us of anger, fear, of all the ways that we have been hurt, Lord, for the ways that we have turned away from you, Jesus, the way that we have looked at your priesthood through human eyes, not recognizing that the priesthood is a gift from you, Lord, that you have given it to us. And so I pray today that you, Lord, would renew all of us in our faith and love for you, Jesus, and for all that you have given to us, especially through the Holy Eucharist, through the sacraments. And now, Lord, I ask you, let's go, let's go. and let make room all just go around the edges. Lord, I ask you to let your healing power flow just as you walk through the clouds, Lord, in your physical body when you are here on those years on earth. Now, Jesus, you still walk among us. You are still here. You, you have given us the presence of looking at you through the eyes of faith, through these eyes which are windows of our soul. Lord, please, please, Jesus, Give to every one of us today a new, renewed gift of prayer. Take away from us fear, anxiety, all the ways that we are disturbed, discouraged, loss of hope. All those here, Lord, who suffer from anxiety, who suffer, Lord Jesus, from fear, whose memories of the past, Lord, rise up to accuse them when you are the Jesus of mercy. Heal those, Lord Jesus, 
who are here today who may be addicted to drugs or alcoholism or pornography. I beg you, Lord Jesus, to touch the members of our families who have lost their faith in you, for those, Lord, who have turned away to false gods and not allowed you to be the Lord of their lives. Oh, Lord Jesus, I ask you right now that you will give to every person here a great awareness of how much you love us individually, for each one of us is special in your eyes, Lord. You don't see Christ, and you see the hearts and the desires of these hearts today. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you heal every person here who is suffering from physical pain, who have all kinds of pain, Lord, in their bodies that nobody knows, that have cancer, leukemia, all the heart conditions, the many, many lists of sicknesses that I hear of, but that you, Jesus, alone can heal. I pray today, Lord, and I ask you to bless all our doctors and nurses and healthcare people, all the men and women who care for the elderly, the mentally and physically handicapped. Jesus, this is all part of your great healing mission that continues in the world, that you provide, Lord, to give us the help through the skills of others. And I pray today, Lord, also, for all of those who teach in our schools, especially, Lord, would you please, Lord, revive and renew a hunger for the faith. Lord, please, just as in many countries, our priests left to go to the foreign lands to speak and to bring you, Jesus, I beg you now for a real revival of evangelization in this year. <coughs> I ask you, please, Lord Jesus, that you will bless the Archdiocese, the four Archdiocese, and all the dioceses here in Ireland. That, Lord, there will be a great revival. It only takes a spark to set a fire burning. And I pray, Lord, that you will renew that spark, that, that fire that was lit here in this hill so long ago. I pray also, Lord, for the grace for all of us to really be touched by what Our Lady said when she said, do whatever he tells you. She came to knock. You sent your mother here so that we would know we have a mother. She would tell us through the beautiful way that she appeared of the value of family life with Joseph, of St. John and the, the word of God, the priesthood, with her as queen, but most of all, her son. In that beautiful knock apparition, we know it was to teach the Irish the values and important things that we hold on to. So I pray, Lord, that on this World Youth Day in, in Knock, where it's been celebrated in Lisbon, and throughout the world and here, that our young people will see the treasures that have been given to all of us through the beautiful gift of our Catholic faith. And I ask you today, Lord, to bless our families. Family life is such a gift. You came, Jesus, you chose Joseph and Mary were your parents. You showed us the structure of a family, this beautiful holy family. And we pray today for families, Lord, throughout our nation who are broken, for those who no longer approach you, Jesus, for the sacrament of matrimony. We pray for those who turn away from the truth of all the beautiful teachings of our church. And I pray, Lord, that you will renew family life. I pray that you would give, Lord, to all parents a joy, especially young people, at the beauty of family, of children. We pray for the protection of the unborn. I beg you, Lord, please, Lord, renew the grace and love of Irish people for children for young people. Lord, not to see life as something to dispose of. I pray for all those who work in the church and in the country for pro-life, in protecting the unborn, but also for the elderly, and for so many, Lord, who are cast aside. Jesus, today here as you walk among us, please listen to us. We have come here because we believe. We have come here because we want, Lord, our country to be a land where there are saints and scholars, but most of all, holy people. We pray also today, Lord, for vocations, 
we beg you, Lord, for vocations to the priesthood and religious life. If you never cease to give vocations, but if we reject the beauty of where they come from, families, then how can we, Lord, how can we have them? And you know, brothers and sisters, as Jesus walks among you, I have to tell you that one of the things I say all over the world is about priests don't grow on trees. Priests are not planted in the middle of us just like that. Priests come through people who want the priesthood. You know, 50 years ago and more, when Jesus gave me an insight, a, a beautiful, long uh, experience of the ordination of a priest, when I was a t first grade teacher, and revealed to me that there was a crisis coming, that many priests would turn away, but that families would no longer value the gift of priesthood, and therefore vocations would not be taken away, but would die. And that's why I tell you that every place I've gone, I go back years later to discover young men who heard me in stadiums or around the world speaking about the priesthood, and they have responded. And that's why we have to pray, and I say to the priests, the best witness to, the, to, to vocations, as the same with sisters, is to be full of love and zeal. To meet a priest, and I met them this week, 88 years of age at the intercession, still full of zeal for Jesus, still, and, and the same with religious. The best gift to witness, as Archbishop said, is, is really to love Jesus. I speak about him all over the world. I'm 63 years in religious life, and it gets better all the time. It doesn't mean we don't have troubles, but it gets better off because I love Jesus, and I tell people, why would you want anything else? He gives you the hundredfold. So we pray today for all our priests. I pray for these men here and for all the priests who couldn't come because of parish ministry. I pray that they will see the transfiguration through their own priestly lives. And I ask in a very special way, to pray. I pray for the seminarians in Maynooth and for young men and women will have the generosity to say, yes, here I am, Lord, send me. And I pray especially today, Mary, our mother, that you would intercede for all of us. Mary, pray for us, please, that we will be true disciples of Jesus, that we will go with haste into the places we live to share the good news. And I would love now for a moment, we're going to pray with Archbishop Ian. I don't want to give him a shot, but as representatives of the Bishops' Conference, because you know, Father Pablo and I have the privilege of ministering to a lot of bishops around the world and presidents of conferences and in all over Africa, all over Asia. We're going to Asia next month to minister to hundreds of priests in, in, in several countries in Asia. And the cry, you know, it's very difficult being a priest and being a bishop today. Anybody who thinks it's wonderful to be called to a bishop, as Cardinal Pell said to me when he was walking through the streets, he came to visit, when he was walking through the streets of, of uh, Australia, had been things being thrown at him and been maligned and all that, he said he heard Jesus say to him, Rejoice. Rejoice. Remember what I promised you. I promised you that I'd be with you, but I didn't promise you that you wouldn't suffer. And he said he looked at, at, at wearing red, as, and as the bishop does in the cardinal, it's martyrdom. There's white martyrdom and red martyrdom. And red martyrdom can be easy. For the bullet in you die, you die for Jesus. White martyrdom is what many of our bishops and priests around the world are suffering. So we have to pray that they will never give up and that they will never get discouraged because if you suffer for Jesus, it's worth it. There's nothing better because you're going to get a big high place in heaven. So let's pray for them. Put your hand out towards the, the bishop here and the, will I pray? Lord Jesus, I thank you for, bishop, for Archbishop Ian and for all the bishops of our bishop's conference here in Ireland. Lord, they didn't choose you, you chose them. You anointed them. You gave them, Lord, the mission, like St. Patrick, to go through Ireland and lead people 
Lord, to set a fire burning in the Irish people. I pray for every bishop. I pray that you will give these men great courage. That you, Lord, as you said to Peter, do not be afraid. You, you called Peter and all of the apostles, not because they were great, but because they were perfect to let you form them. I pray that you would bless Archbishop Aon in our archdiocese and in all the bishops, Lord, that during this day, as we pray on the transfiguration, as we pray with the Holy Father for the youth of the world, I pray for Archbishop that he also will be a St. Patrick for us here, that he will have the great courage to continue to preach the truth in season and out of season, popular or unpopular. I pray for all of the bishops, and I pray especially for our Pope and for all the Cardinals and all the bishops, Lord, in our church. Please, I beg you, Lord, give them unity around you, knowing that you are the way, the truth, and the life, knowing that they have a mission, Jesus, to keep coming to us and giving us the truth. I pray for that today. And Mary, Queen of Ireland, Our Lady of the Apostles, pray for our bishop. I mean, thank you for Archbishop Aylan and his response to this inspiration to come here today. And we ask you to give him a tremendous anointing and to anoint all of the bishops as we pray for them. And we ask all of this in your precious name, Jesus, and bless all our priests. Bless them, give them tremendous gift of fatherhood, the spiritual fatherhood that is so needed in our church, in our societies today. We know, Lord, there are two great gifts you've given to every bishop and also to all priests in the church, and that is the power to make you present in word and sacrament and the authority to speak your gospel, no matter how difficult it may be. So I pray that these two gifts of our church that are not Human and are not, Lord, a job, that they will always proclaim you, Jesus, and that they will bring many, many people to receive the blood transfusion that gives life, that you said, I am the bread of life. Thank you for the priesthood. Thank you for the gift of the ordination. And thank you for their willingness to come, Lord, every day, to come often in difficult times, to give us the bread of life and the sacraments. And for this we say, Glory be to you, Father, Lord, Lord, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.